All right, guys, I just want to talk to you real quickly here about um, taxonomy and phylogeny. We're going to do a lab today that deals with phylogeny, and I think it's important to know the difference. Taxonomy, I hope you've discovered, is when you look at organisms and you look at basically their morphological or physical appearance. And phylogeny is looking at their DNA to determine ancestry. So what we have here is kind of a, a, a newer view of crocodiles and lizards and snakes and birds. The old school view of this would have taken crocodiles and put them over here with lizards and said that because crocodiles and lizards both have very similar features, um, that physically they look a lot alike, taxonomically they used to be clumped together. But now that phylogeny has come along in the last about 20 years, we can look at the DNA sequences of these organisms and we can determine that they're probably not that closely related. In fact, lizards and snakes and tarturas, um, these are like a iguana type of animal. These three are probably much more closely related to a common ancestor. Crocodiles are much more closely related to birds, which is a little confusing until you actually look at the DNA sequences. So how do we come to this conclusion? Um, it starts kind of long ago when we take a look at um, animals called Archaeopteryx. And an Archaeopteryx was a fossil that was discovered in south of Germany. And um, they're basically like a lizard with really long legs. And some of the fossils that were, they were discovering had these weird kind of shapes off to the sides of them. And after a while, they discovered that these little shapes were actually probably feathers. And they were trapped within the sediment and therefore fossilized along with the organism. And so it was kind of a crossover animal. The theory was that, well, geez, these are kind of like lizard birds. And um, the search began in the late 1980s then for uh, conclusive evidence. It wasn't until recently that we actually found a fossil that had some DNA conserved in it. And we could extract some DNA from some of these things. And we could get into uh, some of the uh, components of it and start sequencing out DNAs. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, first we're going to, I'm going to have you run through this thing so you get familiar with this. And we're going to assume that we've collected this, but it actually has been collected. And these are four genes that they discovered in the DNA of an Archaeopteryx. And so you can find those genes if you go to our web page uh, or on our Facebook page. Um, there's gene 3, 2, 1, and 4. Here's one down here. And what we're going to do is you're going to go to... Um, the BLAST homepage, um, which is written up here, and I'll give you some uh, links to that on the Facebook page as well. And what you're going to do is you are going to go to um, the Facebook page, and you're going to take Gene 1, and you're going to download Gene 1. And it's going to pop up over here, and it'll be downloaded for you. Then you go back to BLAST, and we're going to go to Saved Strategies. Click on Save Strategies, and then you're going to click on Choose File to Upload. And here's Gene 1. You can see I've done these before. Here's Gene 1. So we're going to click on Gene 1. Those are downloads. So again, you got to look in the folder labeled Downloads. Um, there's Gene 1. And then what we'll do is we'll open that gene up. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to view that gene. And what it's done is it's given us our whole nucleic acid sequence for that thing. We don't really want to touch too much else on here. But what this will do is we're going to do this thing called BLAST, which is Basic Local Alignment Search Tool. And what that really means is that we're going to take this sequence from up here and the, um, the NCBI website is going to take that and they're going to run that against all of the different databases out there for uh, bioche uh, biochemistry. And so everything that's ever been sequenced is in their database and you're going to be able to run a blast against that database. So we'll take the first gene from the Archaeopteryx that was here. That was sequenced out here. You're going to take that thing and you're going to run a blast sequence on it. And what it will do is it will run and it will start matching against everything else. And it runs through the whole sequence and it gives you a kickback like this. And you have to kind of understand what uh, you're actually looking at. So this top line here, this red bar here, represents your nucleic acid sequence. It looks like it's a little over 5,000 nucleotides long. And that is your query, so that's your question or your search, okay? Then this first line here represents 
um, an organism that they found that had a high correlation of match to it. And so we'll slide over that. I want you to look up here in this area. We'll slide over that. And you can see that that organism's name is NM blah, 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 gallus, gallus, and then collagen type 5 alpha 1. The collagen type 5 alpha 1 is the type of protein that it is. Gallus, gallus is the scientific name of that thing. So this organism had the highest match to your sequence. So what we need to do is we need to look up gallus, gallus. So we're going to open up another tab. We're going to type in gallus, gallus. There it is. And we're going to find out that it is a red jungle fowl. And if we just slide over here, that sure looks like a chicken to me. And so there's our, um, there's our first or our highest match. So we're going to go back to here, and we're going to take a look at this thing. And they do this for all kinds of different organisms. Each one of these lines represents a different type of organism. So here's like Falco Churig. Uh, must be some type of falcon. There's a peregrine falcon right there. Um, if you slide down here and you just keep paying attention, one of these is an alligator or a crocodile. There's an alligator. Um, so there's one that matched up pretty highly as well. Notice how there's a big dip right here with these organisms. Certainly not as high of a match for that gene. It'll put it in a tabulated piece down here as well. So here's Gallus Gallus. That's our highest one that matched. Um, it matched on 10,288 of 10,288 of the nucleic acid sequences. Um, it, didn't, uh, it, it didn't miss any of the coverage of the search. So it was a 100% match. Uh, the E value means that that's the chance that that happened just randomly, that this matched up randomly. And they're saying there's no chance that that, ran, that, that matched up just completely randomly. And then the indent um, means that uh, there was a 100% chance that you got what you got, essentially. Um, so you can see that there was these first couple are going to be a really high uh, match rate. And it's kind of fun. I don't know about fun, but it's, it's interesting to take a look at some of these things and find out what that DNA is extremely similar to. So you have chickens, falcons, and uh, like we said before, alligators. But when you get to alligators, you're looking at a 91% match through that sequence. Okay. So you do that with um, gene one. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go back to Save Strategies and you're going to repeat this for Gene 2. So you go back to the Facebook page, you go to Gene 2, um, etc., Gene 3, and Gene 4. And what we're going to try to do here is we're just going to see where does this thing fit into a phylogenetic tree? Um, is it more closely related to birds? Is it more closely related to um, crocodiles? More closely related to flies? Some of these will lead you down the direction of flies. Okay? So, um, I'll just have you take a look at that, just get used to what this data is and what you're looking at and how to navigate through that relatively quickly. Okay. Um, then what we're going to do is after you get done with that, I'm going to have you, and I'll put this piece, the AP lab asks you to go ahead and investigate on your own uh, to design and conduct your own investigation using BLAST on your own genes of interest. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at genes either in humans or in anything. You want to look up, uh, you know, narwhals and see if they're related to mermaids or something. Wait, mermaids aren't real. Um, actually, you can just look at whatever type of um, gene that you want to look at. It starts on page S49 of the investigation. And down here at the bottom, um, there's a whole list of different types of genes to explore. You can do any of these. Or you can do ones on your own. You can look up conditions. You can look up animals that have a specific type of gene for the pigmentation of their skin or feathers or et cetera. Uh, it's pretty much wide open to you. This BLAST series will have a database for pretty much all of them. But we can't just type in myosin here on the BLAST thing. We, we actually have to have like a, a DNA sequence. So here's how you do it. And, and again, the, the AP Central thing has this on there. It walks you through right below it. Here's the procedure, the example procedure. Um, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to go to a different website here, uh, the NCBI Home, and you can type in a type of gene. The one that they use uh, for their example is human actin. And we'll look up that gene. And they walk you through, like, okay, pick the first one because that's going to be probably your best match. So it looks like CDK6 is the name of the gene, uh, and that's going to be our, our human actin gene. And I'll click on that one, and we'll wait a second. And then it tells you to scan down the page here, and you have to go down quite a ways. 
scan down the page, and we're going to look for variation. We're not going to look for interactions. We are going to look for NCBI reference sequences. So those will be the sequences of like um, nucleic acids. And then you look at the proteins and just grab the first one that you see. So here's this uh, reference number. We'll just click on that. And what it'll do is it'll give you a thing that looks like this. Here's Homo sapiens cyclin dependent kinase 6. Um, blah, 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 blah. We're going to open up the FASTA view of that. So here's FASTA. And when you open the FASTA view of that, what you end up with is a whole nucleic acid sequence of that gene. That's the one that's been mapped out in humans. Okay, So this is the gene for human actin. And what we're going to do is we are going to take this thing and we are going to copy and paste this whole mess into a BLAST sequence. So I'm going to go up here. Down. Sorry, my mouse is just really junky on this laptop. We're going to take it, we're going to copy it, then we're going to go back to our BLAST page and we're going to go to the home. Once you're at the home place here, you're going to go to Nucleotide BLAST. It's right down here. Nucleotide BLAST is going to be there, and then what you're going to do is you're going to paste that nucleic acid sequence into there. Then we're going to slide down here, and we're going to look for highly similar sequences. You may want to change that one to highly similar. And then we're going to go ahead and blast that one. And what it's doing is, again, it's comparing human actin genes to everything else out there. And it said we got a bunch of hits back. It looks like there's a good number of them up here that have high correlations, and then we really have a drop-off. The high correlations. Um, the first one that we get back is Homo sapiens cyclin. Oh, what a surprise. It's humans. The second one, I'm being sarcastic there, the second one is Homo sapiens, a little bit different variant. The third one, Homo sapiens. The fourth one is going to be pantroglodytes. Um, so the first three are Homo sapiens, and they're different variants of that same gene. And the fourth one here is pantroglodytes. If we slide down, it means that we found, there's our Homo sapiens, there's our Homo sapiens, there's our Homo sapiens. Pantroglodytes. Oh, what the heck are pantroglodytes? If we type in pan troglodytes, it's a common chimp. So what it means is that if we take a look at this thing, pan troglodytes then had a 99% match of that gene. So of that gene, we matched up with all of this of 99% of the total query. So of your search, it matched up 99% uh, percent of the DNA sequence. And that's what that means. And so what you're going to do is you're going to choose about four different um, genes for either humans or if you get a favorite animal, a hippopotamus, um, gophers, whatever. Um, choose genes that are um, sequenced out for them. Find them through the NCBI homepage. Um, run them out. Just like I kind of showed you here, I'm going back through this thing. So run them out. Uh, you're going to go back to this home page. You're going to run, you know, just name it out here, type it out here. And then you're going to compare that into the BLAST sequence. And you're going to find out what is some correlations here. Obviously, humans should work out for that one. If you do a different animal, you do horses or whatever, you should find that it matches up with horses' DNA. Um, ultimately, what I want you to do then is you're going to finish up this thing and on page S50 of the student guide here. It's got a list of questions here. It's got five bullet points. What I want you to do is um, answer these bullet points for each one of your queries, each one of your searches. Okay, And realize that I've changed this up a little bit. Here it says humans. Um, it depends on what organism you choose. So if you want to do elephants and you want to look at gene sequences in elephants and then compare them to the BLAST thing and see what else they're related to, um, that is absolutely fine. Um, but it basically gives you an idea of how phylogenies work and how our database of DNA sequencing is helping us to understand how everything else is related. So um, that's pretty much uh, your entire uh, lab for today. Um, watch this, go through it.